The death of 335 North Jonathan Street became the birth of 417 North Jonathan Street. When the architect came out to visit 335, one of the things we were able to do is the homeowner of 417 allowed us to go see that property as well. So during that trip, you know, we, we found out that the 417 was a more viable project to be saved. It had good bones. Um, and we were able to meet the homeowner, Mr. Richard O. Davis, who gave us amazing history of that community because his, his family has spent uh, more than 70 years in the home. Through that relationship that we built with Mr. Davis, it, um, he and his caretakers, because Mr. Davis is in his 90s, um, gave us the opportunity to save 417. So it was the hard work on 335 that opened the door for 417. It gave, uh, it gave him and the family confidence that we would handle things the right way. 417 Jonathan Street, um, the log cabin, the little log cabin that could, um, as we as it's become to be known when um, Reggie Turner and I speak about it often. Um, it, it was amazing. It, it was um, it was about faith. Um, me being a, a religious man as well, I, I believe that that was God sent. Um, at the same time, to lose 335, and in the shadows of that lot stood 417 and um, to turn to that project and to be able to uncover the history that we have, the connections that's come out of that project. We had no idea it was a log cabin underneath there. We had no idea it was the, one of the most um, oldest structures in the area. We had no idea that Jonathan Hager, the namesake of this community, was tied to that, that log cabin. We had no idea we were gonna bring in the archeologist who was gonna not only be working and find items in that backyard and month later find the home of Harriet Tubman and, like, and make that connection. It, it, it's just a snowball effect to see how much came out of that log cabin and how much treasure um, was uncovered by an incident of a police officer hitting a, a building, a building that was going to be torn down and um, the history that comes with it and what that will mean to that entire community. And the, not only that, but the, the money that that um, brought into the community as it brought attention and recognition nationwide. The Johnson Street Cabin to me has become a, an example of our resilience. I mean, this cabin has been standing close to 200 years and it's been covered and it hasn't, it has not been respected. It's been overlooked. But once the siding came off and people saw the beauty underneath, it's now a shining example of the community. And I equate that to our journey here in the United States. Whenever we visit the cabin, there are people hanging out the windows, they're blowing their horns, elders are on their porches. Um, when the archeological dig happened, there was a lot of media there from all over the state. People were visiting the site, they were sharing stories, they were telling of other log cabin structures that were in the community. Um, it, it, was, it was amazing. It was amazing to see a pride in the community in a way that I've never seen before. Um, and seeing the community highly regarded, I took a lot of pride in that. You know, one of the things that my wife said to me early on in this journey was, she says, Google, Google Jonathan Street. And in Google Jonathan Street, you would see story after story in regards to crime, different situations that did not paint that picture in a good light. And I would just challenge anyone to Google Jonathan Street today because it's more of a celebration of its history and, and how rich it is in, in the community. I think that this cabin represents what this community, what the richness of the Jonathan Street community can become again. And I think it represents communities all over this country that have been left behind because we, we look at this work not just for this community, but an example for the nation. As we began to learn the history of 335 North Jonathan Street, um, one of my fellow commissioners, uh, Lynn Bowman, um, who was an educator who taught here um, at HCC, 
um, and also at Allegheny Community College, um, embarked upon research of the community. She started researching um, the deeds of the properties um, to look at the historical ties and links. And as she did so, um, she identified 417 as one of those places that had large historic value. The other thing is that there was a preservation study done by the city of Hagerstown in 2002 that identified it as a log structure. So this is, had been known as a log structure, um, but it was another piece of the pie that I had not put together in my mind. Preservation joined the fight early on. Um, I reached out to Elizabeth Chateau with the, the heritage of the Civil War area and she gave me uh, Nicholas Redding's name, who is the um, executive director of Preservation Maryland. And I reached out to him and said, Nicholas, we, we have a historic black community that's been left behind. Um, but I believe with your help, we could start a revitalization project that could transform the entire community. And he reached out to me soon thereafter uh, as we were trying to save 335. And again, he prepped me to understand that we may lose 335, but we may be able to save the community. Um, and I appreciate Preservation Maryland because they, they have been true to their word in regards to helping us along. Um, their counsel and understanding how to work with local governments and seeking funding and private organizations that um, invest in this type of work, they have helped connect us too. In regards to the archaeological dig, I, I was in heaven. Um, Terrence gets very upset when I say this, but I say it all the time. I started to refer to myself as Indiana Turner. I was given a trial and the opportunity to dig and spend some time with Dr. Julie Shabliski of the State Highway Administration and her team, and they're amazing people. I learned a lot in regards to um, you know, their process and how diligent they are about the work. And um, as they dug up different sites, they could look at the different strata and they could show the different time frames. They could show by the color of the earth, they could show this was the period of time that German immigrants inhabited to that property and when it became African-American ownership. And it was absolutely fascinating. I would say the most impactful um, artifact. It was a coin that was pierced, which was normally worn as a necklace, and it was rubbed smooth. And basically what I was told is that this uh, coin comes from African traditions of a certain portion of Africa where they would rub a coin to um, rub away evil spirits and protect them. And this coin was smooth. So in my mind, I envisioned all the hardship and all the things that those African-Americans went through and the rubbing of that coin and what that signified for their journey. And it's exciting to see that this little old cabin, probably the smallest property in the neighborhood, 700 square feet, soon to be 900 square feet, is the star of the show. Um, but that's only the beginning. There's going to be more stars that, that are polished off as we continue to work.